what's up? You're jacked into another episode of the franchise. Here's a bonus episode this week because we both went to see a new sequel. All right. Sequels coming out by the week. New Transformers coming out this weekend. Everybody get excited for that. The Beast Wars. They're going to be involved. All right. I saw a gorilla. He's a gorilla robot. All right. I'm very much looking forward to that. All right, but today on the franchise, we're talking about Spider-Man. That's right, he's back. Not not the white one. Not Well, I guess there's there's a whole bunch of them, right? Most of them are probably white. But uh, we're, the lead is Miles. Miles Morales from Brian Michael Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man comics. And uh, he's back here in, in his second movie, Spider-Man. Across the Spider Verse, I'll be your host for the evening, uh, Daniel Ehrenberg. You know, uh, this is what I do. And over there, uh, my co-host for every single episode of this show now, Logan B. Adair. Logan B. Parker for this episode, like Peter B. Parker, right? I I got it. You don't have to explain that to me. Oh, okay, I thought you were a real dummy this this episode. No, but- listen, I'm gonna be a nerd this time because. I've oh, read just a lot of Spider-Man comics. We just did TMNT and now Spider-Man. Let me, can I host this episode? Yeah, I would love it. No, just kidding. This is no, no, movie. I really want you to. Go ahead. You you asked for it. All right. So first off, I wanted to say, did you know my first episode I ever did was Scream 5 and Spider-Man F- No Way Home? And since then, we've had a new Spider-Man and a new Scream movie. That is wild. You haven't even been hosting that long. They're just cracking out these sequels. Yeah. They're coming out quick these days. Um, All right. Uh, So I guess I'm hosting. My first question to you, (laughs) Daniel, is why does Miles Morales use his mother's last name? You know, I actually wondered that while watching the movie. Yeah, I I didn't even think about it the first movie. But they like sort of made more a deal about it, like how she speaks Spanish in this movie. Yeah, because and so I was like, "Why do they use her name?" Not yeah, the he's dad. half black and half Latino, and uh, what they which kind Puerto Rican? I'm not sure. I think so. And uh, so he, um, yeah, the dad is black and the mom is Latina. Why is his last name Morales, which is a Latin last name? Well, you read the comics. You just, I figured you had the answer. I gotta say, it must be explained at some point, but I don't remember. Yeah, so I was asking you, the big smart guy over there. Yeah, yeah. all right, I'm 0 for 1. All right, well, that's the only question I had, so I guess I'm done hosting. <laughs> all right, what you. do you give the movie? I give it a 4. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I had a good time. My MVP is Gwen Stacy. Really? I don't know. We'll get to it. All right. Um, I mean, seriously, you saw it last night, so it's fresher in your mind. Walk me through it a little you, bit. Well, Wha- you've had more oh, time I'll, to think about it. And, and I'll, it I'll tell you, like, who directed it and shit. All, All right. right. So um, it's actually not directed by the same guys as the last one, which surprised me. Um, but, I saw uh, they're coming back for the next one, though. Oh, is that right? The, the, or not those guys. These guys. These well, yeah, because this was originally going to be across the Spider Verse Part One and Part Two, but I see at the end of the movie there they renamed the next one. It's yeah. going to be Beyond the Spider Verse. To be honest, I didn't even know that until yesterday. You said Part One, and so mm. I sort of went in knowing this would end on a cliffhanger. I didn't even know that originally. I think it's good to know. Like it, it, people, when I saw Fast X. We're like super disappointed that that shit wasn't wrapped up at the end. And uh, I think they should be upfront about that in marketing. Don't you? Uh, I don't really have a problem either way, to be honest. But I, I can see it both ways. Like, you know what I don't one- like? I don't like we're having to have the should we have to tell people about the part one, part two thing. I wish we didn't never made part one, part two. Yeah, I wish movies could just be one movie. Right. Like, I kind of loved this movie, but I also could have lived my entire life just with Into the Spider-Verse being the one movie of these. 
But it's not really a part one, part two. Like Avengers, it's not Infinity War part one, part two. And this sort of ends how that one does a little bit on like a downer. You don't know what's going on. I don't know. And they're they're not calling it part one, part two. It's across the Spider-Verse and then whatever else you said. Yeah, well, they changed that. Yeah. All right. So our new director is is three fellas, Joaquim Dos Santos, Kemp Powers, and Justin K. Thomas. All right. Thompson. Is that right? Oh, yeah, you're right. (laughs) All right. Uh, Now, I'm not familiar with two of these guys, but I know that Kemp Powers is the sole guy. Yeah, that's all I know also. I know more about the writers. Yeah, well, the writers, it was Phil Lord and and Dave Callahan, I think, in the last movie, right? And now they've just added Christopher Miller, like he's he's using his buddy. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, it was Rodney Rothman in the last movie. Where's that guy? Why isn't he involved? I think he died. What? No, no he didn't. <laughs> he didn't die. Is that what bad to say? He's talented. I always liked Rodney Rothman. He worked on, like, uh, I think Undeclared, that old TV show that I like. Mm-hmm. It's a cool name, Rodney Rothman. It's like Peter Parker. Yeah, D- this Dave Callahan guy's done a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, well, Rece- recently he- as a who- who's recently. this fella? Well, he did Shang Chi, the Mortal Kombat remake that they just made. World or uh, uh, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. Wow, not impressed by any of it. Zombieland, Double Tap, Jesus and- Christ, and The Expendables. How is this guy still getting employed? A lot of big movies. Yeah, but they're all bad. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It makes if it makes money, it makes sense or whatever. It makes dollars, it makes. I mean, you know, didn't the thing Wonder is. Woman nineteen eighty four and Zombieland two kind of like not do that well? I don't know. I don't know. And and Mortal Kombat premiered on. Yeah, that was a Max a or HBO Max service movie. that has already been renamed since. <laughs> right, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, Shang Chi. That was a good one. All right, that was decent. It was okay. That was the best of the ones you mentioned. Yeah. Bad third act, but I like that train fight. Remember that train fight? Or yeah. a bus. Maybe bus? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. It had a $100 million budget. It's two hours and 20 minutes, which is too long, mm-hmm. frankly. And Especially for half a movie. Yeah, what the fuck? How do you make it half a movie and it's shorter than your whole first movie? Yeah, that's probably how Harry Potter I mean, is, longer. Though. Well, I meant longer. Harry Harry Potts? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. All right. It's currently uh, sitting at number 10 at the 2023 box office after only one week, so it's doing well. Yeah. All right. Mario, still number one. How about that? Wow, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, me neither. Wow, that's number one. We didn't care. We didn't care at all. Well, I cared a little bit. It's on my watch list on Letterboxd. I mean, I'll see it before the end of the year is over. Yeah, yeah. I, whatever. Um, so, <sighs> Lo, how does this movie start? Uh, we get a lot of Gwen Stacy. Oh, yeah, I wasn't that into that, actually. Really? I mean, I like Gwen Stacy as a character a lot, obviously, and I think Haley Steinfeld's charming in the role. Um, but, yeah, I, don't, I wanted to get to Miles. I like Miles. It's like, what, what are we, starting this movie with a white girl? Let's get to Miles. I'll tell you, like, I sort of had the thought at one point. I was like, why is everybody's dad... A cop in these movies like her dad's a cop miles dad's a cop there's that indian girlfriend her dad is a cop and then later it's a big plot point about the cops and it sort of made sense but for the first half of the movie i was like but this is a bit convenient everybody's dad is a cop in these movies that's that's annoying but yeah but Peter i got over parker it, like that's not the case in the with the original character right like the, the cop that they're referencing there as like the big fulcrum point in his life, Dennis Leary. It, it, yeah, <laughs> Dennis Leary. Right. Yeah, Captain Stacy. It's just his girlfriend's dad. Yeah. Right. That was weird. Didn't we see Dennis Leary? 
Did we? In, don't I think in the sh- in the shot of Andrew Garfield, it's like it's like when he's like at the end of the movie and it's like has Dennis Leary and he's yeah, like, I think you'll never right. see my daughter again or whatever he says. <laughs> I think it's that part. Yeah, we got to see Garfield and um, Toby. and and Toby and D- Donald Glover. Oh yeah, I I don't know if I liked that. That was kind of weird. Donald I kind of did. I was into that. Also, my, I was in. How how was your audience when you went to see it? Like you mean like really liking it? I mean, were, was it a lot of people? Oh yeah, it was full full of people. Okay, mine was too, and there was a big pop when Donald Glover showed up on the screen. I'm in like, Alabama. The audience booed. all reacted aloud. <laughs> yeah, you're in Alabama, good. so it was like, oh god, a black guy. Yeah, I mean, but Miles Morales is is the. Is the lead? That was a joke. I'm just kidding. We obviously. Didn't I don't know. know. I'll tell you when I went to go see Black Panther back in 2018. There were like four people in the crowd. I went opening weekend. Oh my god! Nobody showed up for Black Panther. That's crazy. It was. I went in Brooklyn and I was the. It was a sold out show and I was literally the only white person in the audience. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it was cool in Brooklyn. I feel like Brooklyn's just full of like white hipsters. Brooklyn's got all kinds, bro. Yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> this this movie takes place in Brooklyn. Yeah, a little bit. You know what's funny is like they he lives in Bedsty, which I used I used to live there, and I'd catch myself like looking to see if I could see places I knew in the background, and then I was like, oh wait, it's animated. <laughs> but they don't try to make it accurate to New York. No, they do. It looks like New York, but it's not like they're like when they showed that coffee shop, I was like, Do I know that coffee shop? I it's not like, like Spider Man Two where you know the diner where yeah. Mary Mary Jane and Peter talk. Yeah, I've eaten in that diner, bro. Yeah, it's not like that. Mm. All right. Um, so uh, Peter, I'm not Peter, right? Miles. By the way, he, did Pete? Did this version of Peter Gwen's Peter? Did he? Oh, we didn't. You say that he turned into the lizard. Did you say that part? What? Did he turn into the lizard? The lizard? Isn't it like she's fighting him and he's like a giant lizard and she kills him? Oh yeah, I didn't think about the lizard, but yeah, I guess he's mutated somehow. I th- yeah, I think he is like her version of the lizard, kind of. Yeah, all right. I don't know. Though. But he's in school now, Miles. He's got uh, his roommate, Ganky. Oh, yeah. He's, I don't know I, much I, about Ganky. I'd like to see more Ganky in the future. He's a major character in the comics. I'm surprised they haven't used him more. And he's an Asian kid. They could use more Asian Who plays kids. Ganky, do we know? I don't even know. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. Does yeah. he talk ever? I think he talks a couple of times. I don't even I don't even remember him talking. Ah, who knows? Um, you know what I like about these movies? In the other movies, the MCU movies, everybody finds out that Peter Parker's Spider Man in the first movie, like his friend finds out, like halfway through, like he drops the Death Star Lego Death Star, or whatever, and then Mom at the end is, or Aunt May at the end is like, "What the fuck?" And then it ends the movie, you know. Um, I like these movies. There's so much tension. He doesn't want. That's why I love Spider Man and Spider Man Two so much. And Spider Man. Well, I guess not Spider Man Three. But there's so it, it, nobody knows really. And that's where they drop. I mean, I don't want to bash the MCU. I'm sorry to just do that here. But that's why I think these movies are so good. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh. So the first villain we see is the Spot. I think he's Dot, right? The Spot. I thought he was Dot. Well, I wanted to call him Spot too, but then I got used to Dot. No, he's the Spot. I've read a hundred ca- comics with this character in it. Yeah. All right. All right. Eat yeah. shit. It's going. <laughs> All right. It's Jason Schwartzman. Did you recognize his voice? No, but I thought he was great. Yeah, I didn't either. But th- my girlfriend leaned over and whispered to me, "Jason Schwartzman." Wow, that's and then, a great and then I knew. Yeah, she she was able to get it. Um. And, uh, Spot, what the hell? I thought the whole movie, his name was Dot. And I thought that everybody was saying Dot, and I was like, oh, Dot, got it. Spot. The Spot. Yeah, I'm sorry. So he, I, I love that opening with him and fighting Miles in the bodega. Yeah. With, where was, he's trying to steal that ATM that very machine. Mm-hmm. And I also have issues with people calling them ATM machines. 
Um, but uh, after uh, after that, I mean, Spot turned out to be like the main villain of the fucking thing. I, I couldn't believe that. Like, I thought he was going to be just like the dude he fights in scene one or whatever. And then at the end of the movie, he's, he's like fucking running shit. I mean, yes and no. He really disappears for a long time. And sort of the more sinister stuff is like the society wanting pe- like the society is kind of like a cult i feel like that's sort of like the main villain is they want peter to stick t- or miles to stick to reality rather than try to save his dad i feel like that's more the villain through the second half and then spot sort of disappears yeah but the spot throughout the movie is like gaining power right shit. right they're trying to shut him down and now the I- the end is like he's gonna go kill his dad so he's he is the real threat, but I feel like you're overhyping how much he's in the movie, kind of. But he's still in the movie more than I expected him to. Like, the spot is a very, very minor Marvel villain. He's in it so little, I didn't even know his name. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> All right, so then, uh, oh, Miles is dealing with stuff like his dad's about to be promoted, right? And mm-hmm. he misses that party. I liked him trying to get those cakes there. Yeah, yeah, and then he he got there and like the, the he had so, wrote so much, but by the time they got there, they were all messed up, and it said like "you suck" or there whatever on the cakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was nice. I'm sure it does. It said something else, but yeah, yeah. Um, nor not proud. I think it said. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I love his relationship with his parents, man. Like they, it's very sweet and real. And I don't know, Miles to me just comes across like a real person at all times. You think it's the voice? I think that helps, but I I think the animation, I think the writing, like this is a really good character and I don't think I've ever seen this character written poorly. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I didn't realize how real he looked until he's hanging out in the other universe with all the other Spider-Men and he just, he looks like a real character like a real like a real guy it's cra- kind of crazy the animation of this movie of these movies are unmatched right well yeah and i i really think that that spider-man into the spider-verse represents uh, an, a sea change in animation that we haven't seen since toy story like after spider-man into the spider-verse came out now like every animated movie you see that doesn't just look like toy story it looks like Spider Man from... into the Spider Verse. But didn't they go? Wasn't there a, di- a change from like Toy Story to then like a 3D sort of animation? For, like all Tangled of... and Moana and all that sort of stuff? Like the newer animation? But that's I feel like just... there was a different, there's a gap. But between it's just those an two. evolution of what started in Toy Story. Before Toy Story, animation was drawn. All right, you go watch like the big movies from the early 90s, like Aladdin and the Lion King and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what movies looked like. And then Toy Story, I mean, I remember when it came out, seeing in theaters, it was something completely new. Yeah. And then by the time of like the early 2000s, every movie looked like that. Every single animated movie was Toy Story. And Pixar would, like, push it forward, and Disney would do that, but, like, it was all variations on what began in Toy Story. And now I feel like Into the Spider-Verse is doing that again. What When we covered Puss in Boots' The Last Wish, I thought it was insane that people were, were like, licking that movie's butthole so much, because, like, it's just the Spider-Man Into the spider versification of the Shrek universe. Right. Uh but it, it does look cool. Sure, because this animation looks cool and we're not doing sick the same of it thing yet. with Ninja Turtles. I was going to say that, yeah. The next Ninja Turtles movie looks fucking identical to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. You say it's so mad. I'm not mad about that. I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it, okay? Like, I'm, it's exciting, but, like, let's give credit where it's due. I think we are. Are we? I don't think anyone's being like, we're, I don't think the Turtles are like, we did it first. I think Puss in Boots kind of was like we're innovative, and I was like, "No, you're not. You're doing what that uh, other really? movie did." Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really feel that way. All right, whatever. I don't care. Um, so uh, the first villain we see after the spot is uh, the Vulture, right? 
Yeah, he's like a Renaissance painting version. That was kind of cool. Yeah, and he's um, one of the Lonely Island. Oh, which one? Yorma. Okay. Yorma Taconi. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was really cool animation. I like that they didn't rest on their laurels in this one either. They were like doing weird shit with it. Um, and that's when we meet the, the first couple people from the, the big uh, cult, as you call it. Right. Oscar um, Isaac. Oscar Isaac is Spider-Man 2099, which excites me greatly, Logan. I was I was uh, what you might call a Spider-Man 2099 stan. Wow, in the, he's your in, favorite in, one? In the 90s, I was very, very into this character. It was one of the first comics I ever read on like a month-to-month basis. I had like every fucking issue of Spider-Man uh, 2099. Miguel O'Hara. I even popped for like his little... His little robot sidekick. Is he is he Mexican or Irish? Oh, I guess I never really thought of O'Hara, but you're right. But he's uh, he's he's Mexican, I think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Irish and Mexican descent. You're right. Oh wow! I never, I never thought about it before. Hell yeah! Look at me. Yeah. Hey, that's my my girlfriend's Irish and Mexican. Wow. She should love this. She character. probably knows Miguel. <laughs> she, did she have a take on Miguel at all? I think she thought he was cool. Did she know his voice? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if she did at the time, but she's better at that than I am. Cat, like knowing who people are, their voices. Mm-hmm. Like she knew Andy Samberg too. Who's he? He was um, Ben Riley. Who's that? They bring him with them uh, at the end. Like he's one. He's like the. One who's like, check out this pose. Okay. It's perfect pose. That right. was Andy Samberg, and I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Issa Rae. Yeah, we get Issa she's Rae. Like and she's like a pregnant Jessica Drew, which is fine. But I'm, I'm a big Jessica Drew fan, too, Logan. She's like, not. So the, I didn't know this, that this they're making a choice here to make her pregnant. And black, like oh. it's it's like an alternate universe Jessica Drew, which is cool. But I thought that was gonna lead to them introducing my Jessica Drew, and th- and that never happened. Yeah, I'm sorry. Next it's movie, okay. maybe in the next movie. Um, but yeah, I was sort of iffy on that character to be honest. She was all right. She was fine. Yeah. Um, I'm sort of iffy on Issa Rae, maybe. She's my least favorite part of that movie, Vengeance. Is that what that movie's called? What's that oh, movie yeah. Called? She's my least favorite part of that movie, too. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know that that's her fault in that movie. I just think that no. storyline's a little off to the side. Yeah, she's just taking a job. <laughs> yeah. Um. So th- then there's a lot of universe hopping, huh? Yeah, right. I, I didn't like one part. I thought it was a little convenient maybe i missed something but i thought it was a little random how spot i guess his name is how he he just like kicks himself through himself and realizes like the whole thing where he can go get more power by going through dimensions that was like the one thing i thought was a little random i didn't even think about it all right well i'm a more i, I watch movies more closely i think. I, I guess i kind of don't care about the plots to these movies that much i don't think you care about plots really to any movie (laughs) i think you're right i think that's the thing with you (laughs) i like aesthetic and characters that's that's what i'm interested in and this movie has both those in spades bro yeah exactly exactly yeah um i liked uh spider-man india yeah he was fun likable character i'd like to see more of him I like the Spider Punk, obviously. I knew you would, yeah. Of course. Daniel Kaluuya. The other guy was the cab driver from those Deadpools. I don't remember there being a cab driver in the Deadpools. Oh, yeah. He's like his assigned cab driver. He always uses him as his cab driver. He's also the guy from... um, Remember at the beginning of Creep... You probably don't. This is like... It doesn't have anything to do with those movies. But he visits a guy, an Indian guy, at the beginning of Creep 2 and gives him that little little bear or a little stuffed lion and he kills him at a 
table. They're just sitting there talking, and he slits his throat with a knife. That's who this guy is also. That's that's who he is to you? Yeah, yeah, it, honestly, yeah. I think I knew him from TV. Hang on, I'm, look, I'm looking at his shit right now. Okay. Um, you remember that from Creep 2? Oh, yeah, I watched him on this show called Blunt Talk. All right, that sounds fun. All right, there was a Patrick Stewart uh, Logan, he was playing a character by the name of like Steve Blunt or something. <laughs> Walter Blunt. I just looked it up. Yeah, Blunt Talk. He was a regular on that show. That's what I knew him from. Anyway. All right. Uh, um, all right. So uh, we go to the big uh, spider facility, right? Yeah. HQ, they call it. Yeah. And we meet all kinds of spiders. Yeah. So many spiders. We Jake Johnson, he's still around. He's got a little baby. He came. Oh, and his baby. They call. They kept calling it May Day. And see, I know Aunt May Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, May Day was Spider Girl. All right, there used to be a comic Spider Girl that was an alternate universe where, like, Peter Parker retired from Spider Manning, and his daughter took up the mantle. Wow, right? so I didn't know this. And her name was May Day Parker, named after Aunt May. Oh, wow. So that's not that funny then. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. All right. That, that's pretty cool. I, di- I didn't know that she would uh, turn out to be a spider girl. I was pulling all kinds of shit. I she was re- always hanging on the webs, though. She's like, wee, swinging around. <laughs> yeah, man. She's getting started young. <laughs> that's how you like them, right? Uh, I knew you were going to say something. Like, I was like waiting <laughs> for it almost. And, you should have just kept want... going. Then. I know. I really should have just kept going, man. <laughs> I have a question about yeah. the baby. I, at first, I sort of thought maybe he had a baby and then the wife died, right? Because the wife's not around at first. But then we see him at home and we see his wife and the wife's like, I told you not to keep taking the baby out. Why is he taking the baby out? I thought it was like a necessity thing. Like he had nobody to watch the baby, but mom's at home. I think, nothing. I think she's working and he's a stay at home. So is he, he's, he's all, what she's doing is way less dangerous. Have her take the baby to work. She I might, thought it was pretty irresponsible to be honest. Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I didn't think about it. I, I, of course she's alive. I never thought for a second she was dead because he seems happy. Like, well, like he would, the whole world's going right for him. There's Sp- I saw Spider-Man with a baby, and I was like, why? This seems dangerous. Where's mom? That was my first thought. And then they answer that question. He's not fighting crime. They're just like at headquarters. No, they. he fights crime with the baby. He definitely fights crime with the baby. And then... And then they answer my question where mom is. And then my other question was why? So why not leave baby with mom? Peter B. Parker made me lose right. a little respect for him. Dad, All right. Dad. Why don't you, uh, why don't you give me your other grievances, Logan? Let, let's, let's go through them. I'll be honest. Those are, those are the only two. Why, <laughs> why is the baby not with mom and a little convenient how he kicks himself into himself or whatever happened? You're a nitpicker. That's what we, that's what I do on here. I guess I like the movie. We're trying to do I'm more about the, time. I'm more about the broad strokes. I just bought us two minutes of arguing. <laughs> that was <laughs> pretty good, right, man? Dude, I look. If I have any problem with this movie, it's just about how franchises are now just snakes eating their own tails. All right, like. Yeah. It's we then did we sound like losers and boomers. No, no, no. Complaining about that. Fuck off. No, I don't care. Yeah, I don't right. care. Into the Spider Verse is an incredible movie. One that I gave a five on this podcast, which I don't really do that often. And I rewatched it the day before I went to see this one, and I still felt that it was like an incredible film. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I love it from beginning to end. I think it has a lot to say. I think it's a great New York movie. I think Miles is an incredibly well-developed character. The and music. The music. Yeah, Posty. It's great here, too, by the way. Nothing yeah. stood out to me the same way as Posty, but uh, it was good. There's nothing as iconic as Sunflower, though. Right. I mean, we don't know that yet for sure, I guess. We know. Sunflower was like a hit before that movie even came out. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, like when it when I whatever. Anyway, uh, I it's just like 
we're doing this multiverse thing now. <laughs> All right? Yeah. And I'm not into it. We got to stop. No Way Home was interesting, I guess. Like, But it was more a novelty than anything else. And... Well, this movie's that movie is a multiverse movie, so we can get callbacks. This is a multiverse movie, so that people can realize anybody can be Spider Man, which I like way more. Yeah, but that was the message of the last one. Yeah, and like I got it. Like, so you wanted them to shut down the multiverse in this movie? I don't care. Like, uh, no. I mean, that's kind of the premise of these movies, I guess. But I wouldn't mind seeing Miles just like in a story on earth <laughs> like, of course yeah, yeah. uh I, but yeah like i cried in into the spider-verse when like they do the whole like it, it, peter always meant like anyone could be behind the mask like it, i think matt may says that or something yeah and uh fucking i mean that's the message of this movie too but all it is is just like looking at a million spider-mans and i'm like oh i remember that guy from a cartoon Oh, I remember that guy from the Clone Saga from the nineties. Oh, that guy, sure. Like it's it's uh, it's fine, but like it's just it's fan bait, and like these movies need to be more than that. This one is like I'm not giving yeah. this particular movie shit, but like it is frustrating to see where things are going. Like before the, the movie, I got a trailer for the Flash. Mm-hmm. Did you? Yep. And first of all, I don't think they should be showing DC trailers in front of Marvel movies. Yeah, great point. Great I have point. a problem with that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, what's that movie? Like, it, That'll it's be worse than this. Michael Keaton as Batman, and he's hanging out with Ezra Miller, and then there's a new Supergirl. I think that they're having to market that movie weird, though, because of Ezra. They're, they don't, they're showing more Keaton than he's probably in the movie. Because yeah. they don't they don't want to show Ezra the whole time because he's a weirdo. I'm gonna wait. Like I don't want to see that movie unless somebody tells me like Michael Keaton's in an hour of that movie. I don't want to see it. I don't even care about Michael Keaton Batman, so I'm not gonna see it. Well, that was my first Batman, so uh, you know I, it feels weird. Like there's a Michael Keaton Batman movie, I'm not gonna see it. You know who but Henry's first one was? That real old Adam, guy, because Henry's old. Yeah, yeah, good one. Uh, you know, yours was probably fucking Nolan. No, no, I, I knew the I knew the old ones. I was born in the nineties, D Train. I'm not like I wasn't born in like 2004. Yeah, I know, but you're not cognizant until you're like four. That's bullshit. I was like, you same with you. You were like, I was three and watching Ninja Turtles. I was, a, I remember it. That's the same with me. I guess so. The first movie I ever saw, not as like a joke, was I remember watching Jurassic Park 3 in two, when I was three years old, 2001. I wow. remember watching that movie. That wasn't scary to you? No. I remember the part where Barney's on the TV. Laura Dern has a little kid who watches Barney, and I was like, oh, Barney's on the TV. Did you pop for Barney? Oh, I absolutely did. Nice. And then I pooped my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's just the thing babies do. That's funny. Oh. Um. So, yeah, I, I just I'm put off by the multiverse thing. Me like, too. We I need agree. to put a pin in that. Like, it's a fun idea. And yeah, you get like actors from all kinds of different places. But like, I, I don't But let's want... not complain about that w- during the Spider-Verse movies. That'd be like if we were like, let's, why are they why? still doing this cars is ground zero. Fast and This is ground zero for that shit, man. But that's what these are. Like, if you want to do like, why is like ant-man still dealing with the multiverse then complain about that but these are like the the spider-verse movies but i don't think they needed to be like i i didn't need the sequel to into the spider-verse like it could have been spider-man something else you know i guess so i guess the the draw i'm fine i'm fine with him just fighting the spot in brooklyn give me a movie of that yeah, I I I, t- I, t- I take back what I said because the draw of these movies isn't the Spider Verse; it's the animation. I think I think that that's what they have going for. And is, I think Miles. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think you could do anything with Miles in the animation. I don't think this. Uh, me personally, anyway, the, the Spider Verse isn't what's keeping me coming back. No, if anything, like I I I think it detracts from the Spider Man character. Spider Man's a simple guy, right? Like he's 
he's from Queens in the original or, or Brooklyn in this one. He's got, you know, a, f- a little family. He's trying to keep his identity secret. He goes he's to school. school. He likes a girl. He's a, he's a teenager. Yeah. Like Spider-Man's the most low stakes of, of all superheroes. And, and in this one, it's like there's a whole organization of like a corporatized Spider-Man organization where they're trying to like make sure the same shit happens to every Spider-Man in every universe. It seems wild. It's it's pretty cool though. No, it's cool. I'm I'm fine with it and, and I'm I'm definitely like invested in the story and, and I'm not for- a comic reader, so I'm learn I'm getting all this stuff for the first time. So I like that. You're like why are, I guess why are we getting all this stuff I already know about and don't like? But like No, I mean I this isn't a thing in the comics. Like oh, okay. Spider-Man world. Oh, okay. Like it's just that like all these characters like they're they're pulling from different comics and shit. But uh I I don't know. I just wish the whole enterprise was smaller. Yeah. Me too. Me too. But I mean that was my problem with mcu spider-man was like he has like this iron man nano i like spider-man like uh, spider-man spider-man not iron man version of yeah have him struggling to sew and shit yeah but this one is just like open this box i made you a a suit you know and there was enough of that in the last movie right like because he's learning to be spider-man he's wearing that halloween costume for like most of the movie yeah and uh but I mean, by now, like he's been Spider-Man for like six months or something. And he just seems like a vet. Like, if anything, he's just having trouble balancing his personal life and his Spider-Man life, which is good. Like, I, I'm interested in that. But and he's missing his friends from the last movie, like yeah. Gwen Stacy, and his uncle. He killed his uncle. His uncle died. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, we, didn't, we didn't even talk about like the whole end. How the well, how the, the spider that bit him is from another dimension. So when he went into that machine, it sent him to the spider's dimension. And in right. that world, there's no Spider-Man because that spider never bit anybody because he got sent to his dimension. That's all so pretty Miles cool. Miles became the Prowler. That's a cool twist on the multiverse. I, mean, I not agree. A twist, but like a cool way to use it. He's in a world with no Spider-Man. Though. This movie, th- these movies are doing multiverse stuff far and away better than any other thing yeah let's say that i don't want this to just be like the us no i'm I'm, I'm gonna give this fucking movie a four i loved it like i i don't think it's as good as the first one but like the fact that the first one was so are exactly and the fact that it's as good as it is is kind of a miracle in itself like it's it, this could have been a fucking disaster and a disappointment, and it really wasn't. Like, I'm excited to see the third one. I want to mm-hmm. know what happens in the story. I want to spend more time with all of these characters. I'm excited that they're bringing back Nick Cage. But, um, yeah, I mean, whatever. I... So, I feel like I, I had something. They brought up Nick Cage, and I, I got really... Uh, I got distracted. um oh do you do you think so do you think his dad is going to die in the next movie because they say like he has to go through something but honestly i sort of felt like like uncle aaron was like enough i felt like that was like what what he had to go through to become a spider-man i don't don't really understand this extra layer how he has to lose a captain cop i don't i don't understand that yeah every spider-man loses a captain but like in most cases, that's their girlfriend's dad, yeah, not their own cares? dad. Yeah, yeah, if I found out today that every dad of every girlfriend I've ever had died, <laughs> I wouldn't give a shit. And honestly, it would probably just make things easier for you. Well, I mean, I'm not in contact with any of them anymore. No, no, I just mean like if somebody doesn't have a dad, then that is probably better, right? <laughs> I don't know about that, Jesus. I don't know what I'm saying, to be honest. No, but, like, but like, that's usually a thing with with people. Is like you got to meet the dad. So if if that's not a thing, then that's pro. I've, I've I've never done that, so I don't know really what I'm talking about. Yeah, but also a lot of people who lose their dads are like broken inside and have to like figure shit out. I guess so. But what if yeah. it's like a recent death? That's even worse. Really? I feel like it. Yeah, I guess. I guess you're right. Actually. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to like have to mourn with somebody. <laughs> I used to worry about that with like exes. Like, oh my god. Like, I I had like an ex who like loved their <laughs> grandmother, and I was like, oh my god, at some point this grandmother's gonna die, and it's gonna be a nightmare. Were you were you out of the relationship by then? Yes, thankfully. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Just terrible. You're a terrible boyfriend. Uh, you know, it depends how invested in the relationship. Would you I do? Am. You ever seen the movie Fifty Fifty? Yeah. Would you do that thing? How his girlfriend leaves him when he gets cancer? No, no, I wouldn't. Who's have... the girlfriend? Anna Kendrick's the therapist. Who played his girlfriend? I don't fucking remember. Who played? She's somebody famous. It's like Bryce Dallas Howard or somebody. Bryce Dallas Howard. That's just somebody I thought of. Who's in Fifty Fifty? That was a good movie, Fifty Fifty. Yeah, I liked it. I might rewatch it for my little numbers thing I'm doing right now. Uh, yeah, it is Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh. You're right. Wow. You fucking nailed that. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. a former Gwen Stacy. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Um, by the way, Gwen Stacy. We didn't really talk about. I. Uh, I didn't like the part where he was like. Uh, where she's like the mask is like my badge <laughs> i thought that that was that was pretty funny they should they should put um uh body cams inside everybody's mask inside all spider-man's masks so you can well, see that, when they is, break the law now what they were trying to do in civil war with that registration act oh a little trying bit. to hold everybody accountable yeah a, a little bit i guess um by the way there's a theory online that Gwen Stacy is transgender. Do you know about this? Oh my god. There's a there's a apparently there's a little sticker or like a flag of a tra- like a transgender flag stitched onto her dad's suit and they're like what well, nobody would have that on their suit unless their family is transgender. So Gwen Stacy is transgender. Maybe he's just a fucking ally. But that's the thing. People were like, even if you're an ally, no cop is that much of an ally that they would wear that unless I I I family. agree. I agree that that's true in real life. But we're watching a Spider-Man cartoon that yeah, is I'm just coming up out. A theory. This isn't that my is, theory. That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. I was just bringing it up. I, th- I thought you'd have that reaction. But... I hate the internet. I like. I I gotta get off the internet entirely. Yeah. Yeah, like I got off Twitter. That was good. I'm not part of this that echo chamber anymore. It's kind of funny though. Sometimes it was, but but then you see like people actually take it seriously. Like people approve <laughs> the dumb things people say, and you're like, oh no, people actually think that that like that's yeah. not a joke. Yeah, that's the thing, and that's frustrating to me because it creates a group think that is dumber than what could have existed before twitter yeah i I mean i agree with you i try to think for myself most of the time i i know you do and i do too but i even i found it difficult on twitter like you'd buy into shit like i I don't know you or things became accepted as just fact when they were bullshit Mm -hmm. i don't know um what else you got on spider-man i don't know i liked uh I liked her at the end, getting all her friends back together. They're gonna go save Miles. Yeah, looking forward to that. It's that that's fun. I like all those characters. Well, I was I was disappointed. No Peter Porker, the spectacular Spider Ham, in this one. He wasn't in the crew at the end. I, I he might have been in the crew at the end, but like definitely he didn't have any lines or anything. Well, neither did Nick Cage, but you brought him up. <laughs> he had a line. Oh, he had a line. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure everybody from the last movies in the in the group at the end. I there sure were only like so. five or six of them. I'm sure they got everybody back. All right. Great. I hope so anyway. <laughs> By the way, did you know there's like this little kid? This is another Twitter thing for you. There's this little kid on Twitter. He's like 14 years old. He learned how to do Lego animation. And he like made a trailer for this movie, but in Lego. And apparently there's... Well, not apparently. There, remember the Lego part of this movie? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, he got to animate that. Like, they said that he could animate that. So, like, a little 14-year-old animated the Lego part of this movie. Well, that's cool. I thought I thought the Lego part of this movie did seem, like, charmingly childlike. Like, like it felt like a kid playing with Legos. 
right. and it's just a second anyway. Oh, you know yeah. what part I fucking didn't like? What? Everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. Oh yeah. They fucking folded everything, everywhere, all at once into this shit. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. That's something we can. That's the worst part. That's the worst example of the multiverse. I gro- exactly. I groaned, man. I groaned in my chair. It took me right out of the movie. Remember that when that one best picture? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, Spider Man into the Spider Verse is so much better than that movie. Oh, that one's this not is getting nominated for best picture. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I like this more. Yeah. Should we rank Spider Man's? We can There's do ten that. of them. All right, what's the I best think, Spider-Man? Oh, the top to bottom? Yeah, let's well, do that. Well, in my opinion, nothing will ever top Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I think Into the Spider-Verse is the best. Yeah, that's what I put second. All right, second I would put... Yeah, Spider-Man 2. Oh, I was about to be so mad at you. <laughs> Next up, the original Spider-Man. I agree. Then this one. I agree. And I think that's it. That's the those are the four good ones. That's the top tier. Yep, obviously. Next up, in my opinion, Spider Man three. I fucking agree. Whoa, I, are you serious? I th- Yes. F- Spider Man Homecoming is your favorite MCU movie. Oh wait, wait, I forgot like- about I forgot about the MCU ones. I'm sorry. So you have seven movies on your list right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should have started at the bottom. I would have said ten and you would have realized. Alright, you're right. All right, can we let's do that? Let's go back to the bottom. <laughs> okay. All right. What's All right. the worst Spider-Man? Movie? Yeah, I forgot you love Homecoming. So worst, in my opinion, the Amazing Spider-Man. I agree. All right. Second worst, the Amazing Spider-Man Two. I agree. Itsy bitsy. Sp- I I kind of <laughs> see. That's the thing. I think the first Amazing Spider-Man is the only Spider-Man movie I don't like. Yeah, it's the only one I have no urge to ever watch again. The others yeah. all have something that are I'm into. Yeah. Uh, and so eight, nine, Amazing Spider-Man two, number eight. This one we covered, and honestly, I don't know how I rank this trilogy. I find this trilogy all pretty <laughs> mid, to be honest. All of these movies, but this one is just it's got callbacks to villains, and Doctor Strange is a stupid idiot. Uh, no way home. That's my number eight as well. Wow. Number seven is not going to be your number seven. This is where I put Homecoming. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put uh, I'll put uh, Spider-Man 3 there. All right. I, lo- I love that movie, though. Like, there's things about Spider-Man 3 I fucking love. The callback to Spider-Man 3 and Into the Spider-Verse where they show him, like, dancing and shit, <laughs> I'm, like, into. Yeah. you. I heard one time on a podcast, you, like... You honestly were like you. You really like that part. You were like, yeah. There's like some dumb stuff, but what about the dancing? That's great. <laughs> like I, I that did, one. I that was do. so funny. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Uh, it's so movie. Raimi. I love how Raimi that movie is. Yeah. The, oh, the only bad stuff in that movie is the Venom shit. Yeah. Like I like the Sandman stuff, and I like the Gwen Stacy stuff. But Harry as a villain isn't great. Uh yeah, that's fair. So right, only so one of the villains is really good. That's a problem. But uh, So number six, this is, I think, the best of the trilogy, in my opinion, because it's got the best... I think it's the best love story. I think Peter and... Her name's not Mary Jane. What's her name? MJ. I know, but it's like Michelle or something. Zendaya. It's the best Zendaya Tom Holland stuff. It's probably when they started fucking... This is Far From Home. I, that's, I would put that there, too. All right. Number five, Spider-Man 3. Five for me, Homecoming. All right, and then four across the Spider Verse. Yeah, Spider Man One, Spider Man One, and then we swap. I I have say Spider Man Two, number two, and into the Spider Verse, number one. Absolutely right. Yeah. So lots All right. of lots of good Spider Mans, and one that I don't. I like. I definitely think Spider Man is the Marvel character that has been treated best. Which is crazy. It's probably for a while, the superhero that's been treated best, honestly. Because there's a lot of good Batman movies, but there's a lot of fucking terrible Batman movies. And, uh, like, Superman's got some great movies and some really bad movies. And uh, who else is there? I mean, everyone's got a bad one or two. Did you say Superman? Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, Batman, you don't, like, 
Lego Batman. I think Batman has a lot of good ones, honestly. There's only no, it does, but it's also got Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. And but Batman and Robin is like Amazing Spider Man two, and Batman Forever is like Amazing Spider Man. Like Batman Forever <laughs> is kind of the only bad one. But not that, I one. I would watch Amazing. I think Amazing Spider Man is a million times better than Batman Forever. <laughs> I agree. I'm just saying that that's the worst one. But I think Amazing Spider-Man 2 as a second worst is pretty similar to Batman and Robin as a second worst. Like, they're both really watchable and funny. Yeah, I guess you're right. So I think that Batman is pretty similar to Spider-Man. Yeah, I guess Batman is the DC equivalent of, of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy, because after five Spider-Man movies, we were like, wow, that sucks. They only made two, and then... Three sucked, and the two Amazing Spider-Man sucked. But yeah. now we like three, and we like Amazing Spider-Man two, and now we've had a bunch of good new ones. Yeah, a couple of those have aged better than we expected them to, and like the MCU is doing well by that character. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, huzzah for Spider-Man. Yeah, I love you, Spider-Man. Honestly, one of my favorite characters ever. He, I, that was always my answer when someone asked me who my favorite superhero was. I used to say Spider-Man. What about Buffy? Does she count? I don't think so. In this, I mean, yeah, she counts. She's a superhero, but like when people ask you that, they're thinking DC or Marvel. Like that's a clever answer. <laughs> it is clever. I would like it if somebody if I asked somebody. You know, it's like, like oh, my favorite superhero is Woodward and Bernstein from All the President's Men. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> No, has anyone ever said that? That would be such a lame answer. Such a, like a douchebag. I know, answer. but that's what I'm saying. Like, people have answers like that. Yeah, I would never. Or like, or like, like my favorite superhero is Dark Man from that movie Dark Man by Sam Raimi. Like, come on. Yeah, that's better than the Woodward and Bernstein. That's crazy. I would never. I would never speak to somebody if they said that. All right. Well, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? To Journalism. <laughs> that would be <laughs> have to have a real whistle blowing. <laughs> my favorite, superpower my favorite superhero is reality winner. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the girl yeah. Uh, Sydney Sweeney. What what would my superpower be? I've said this a million times oh, on the podcast. Sure, Visibility. For, yeah, I yeah. About that. Mine would be to teleport. I think that would be the coolest power. That would be good. I mean, I don't drive, so that's very appealing to me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, even like, to drivers, you like never have today, to today, I have therapy, Logan. And it's pretty close, but it's a 20-minute walk. Yeah, you could leave like three seconds before you have to be there. Yeah. It's really amazing. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you, could, you could be like eating a snack right before we have to record and then just teleport into your chair. Yeah, that is a good one. I'd that like to be one. an invisible teleporter. Yeah. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta be able to spy on those those ladies. I just gotta spend some time in the ladies' locker room, bro. What if you could find a way to, you could always be teleport, ABT, always be teleporting, so that you could always be invisible. You could be like, I'm gonna teleport from this side of the room to that side of the room constantly, so you're always in the middle of teleporting. So you could be in a locker room, always teleporting. So what about this? Constantly. What about this? I'm invisible. I'm invisible. Um, but, and I can teleport, but you can only teleport to the closest girl's locker room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like the time turner in Harry Potter. Like you can only go back a day or whatever it is. Like you have such limitations. You can only teleport to the closest women's locker room. That's, That's right. as far yeah. as you can go. Yeah. Yeah. That's very funny. That's my power. What a creep. I know. All, All right. right. Great film for st- Oh, MVP, LVP. Yeah, who's your MVP? Well, I said uh, Gwen earlier, and it might be Gwen, but I really like Miles, and I really like Jake Johnson. I thought Jake. I Johnson. love Jake Johnson in these movies. He's yeah. so good. I missed him for like the first half of this movie. I was so happy when he showed up because I wasn't sure he would. Oh, I knew he was. I saw I saw a photo of him, so I knew that he was coming at some point. And I th- I'm gonna. No, I'm gonna go with Haley Steinfeld. I'm gonna go with Haley Steinfeld. I think she's really good in this movie. Wow, she gets a lot more to do. I told you, like, if somebody said who played Gwen Stacy in Spider or Into the Spider Verse, I wouldn't have even been able to tell you Haley Steinfeld. But after this, I'll never forget ever again. I'm sorry, Haley. Listen, as as a kid, 
the idea of there ever being a Spider-Man 2099 movie was so pie in the sky. Like, it never, ever could have happened. Because the only movies they were making back then were, like, Batman. Like, the biggest characters. You know? So, I gotta go with uh, my man Miguel. Why did you like him so much? I don't really understand what the appeal was. Because it's Spider-Man in the future... Logan, he was a fucking mess. He had weird issues with his family. He was kind of an alcoholic. He uh, he worked at Alchemax, which was interesting to me. He was like kind of a scientist. And he was like the first superhero I ever read that wasn't just like a white dude. Yeah. And so I uh, I always just loved that character. He's, he was the cool and his costume. That is a fucking cool costume. Yes, I agree. He probably looks the coolest of anybody. He's yeah, he's really big too. You think he'll? I mean, he'll um, he'll definitely show up again. I like Oscar Isaac too. Are you going Miguel or Oscar Isaac? It's it really matter? Miguel. Like Oscar Isaac is good in the role. He's he's you know, but I think he's really good actually. It's Miguel. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Miguel, who's your LVP? Because I don't mm. really know. Yeah, I mean, there's no one really especially bad in these Michael movies. Michael Dennis Leary. That was weird seeing Dennis Leary. <laughs> we, remember we saw Cliff Robertson, too? That was awesome, though. I love yeah. Cliff Robertson. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't really know. Everybody's so good. All the, all the voice actors are really great. I might have to go Issa Rae. No, I don't want to do that. No? <laughs> I don't want to. Schwartzman's great. Yeah. I I'm going to go Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary for that one shot? <laughs> yeah, I mean, all the voice actors are really good. It was cool. J. Jonah Jameson. J. Oh, J.K. Simmons yeah, is yeah. J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, I pop for that. L yeah, J I mean, he is in the MCU, too. I, I think we've just accepted that he's the only actor in the world that can play J. Jonah Jameson, which yeah. I'm fine with. They nailed it in 2002. They, yeah. they realized. How come you, we got to see some more Venoms in these movies? Is like that okay Tom to Hardy? say? Yeah, I want to see Tom Hardy pop up in these. There should be Maybe an animated Venom. They can do like some really scary stuff with animated Venom, probably. That's what I'm saying. Like, create your own... F fuck the, like, all these Spider-Mans being in Miles' movies. Just give them all their own... I want to watch a Spider-Man 2099 solo movie. I, I want to watch a, like a Venom cartoon. Give me, give me some of the, with this animation style. Yeah, just yeah. It's, it's so much money. It takes so much time. I did see that they're like delaying this next one for a little while. It doesn't take so much money. The fucking Marvel MCU movies cost like close to three hundred million dollars every time out. I saw this one only cost a hundred. Oh yeah, that's cheap. Hundred mil. Yeah. Anybody can do that. Um. All right. I mean, I got nothing else really. All right, I mean, me neither. I was trying to stretch this to an hour, but I don't know if we'll be able to make it. It's 57 minutes, baby. We're yeah. good. I'll add a All song. Right. I'll add a really long song. Maybe I'll play it twice. All right. Beep, 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 beep.